Good morning, everyone. Good Welcome. Morning. Thank you all for being here. What a tremendous tr turnout. Uh, this is truly a joyous day for the Diocese of Syracuse and for the people of Syracuse. And we're very excited, and God blessed us with a beautiful, sunny, blue sky day, which we all know in Syracuse is truly a blessing. So thank you, God. I would like to introduce our bishop, Bishop Robert J. Cunningham, who will greet you and make the announcement of our new bishop-elect. Bishop Cunningham. Well, thanks very much for being here. It's a great day. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago when we stood in the, I stood in the front door of the, the church here before we had the gathering space, and Bishop Moynihan welcomed me to the Diocese of Syracuse. But even before that, when I was named the Bishop of Ogdensburg, uh, there was a young priest in Ogdensburg who greeted me at the garage door of the bishop's house, <laughs> snuck me in at night the night before the announcement was made, and that was Father Lucia. And we were privileged to live and work together for five years there, living together for two years as Father Lucia served as my secretary and master of ceremonies in the Diocese of Ogdensburg. So I'm very happy to be here this morning. I wanna thank the members of Syracuse Media for being here. Uh, you are always the ones who help us tell the story of the church. You make the church live in the minds and hearts of many people throughout the diocese. And this is a very special day, a very happy day for the diocese. We've known for the past several months since last June when I submitted my letter. I know that there's been a lot of prayer said for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in, in selecting the next bishop for the diocese of Syracuse. And uh, last week, some of us learned that the Holy Father has made his decision. And this morning it was announced in Rome at, uh, they always announce things in Rome at 12 noon. They call it 12 noon Roman time, 6 a.m. our time. So this morning the word came out and we're delighted to welcome Bishop Lucia. We look forward to his coming and living and dwelling among us, teaching us, leading us uh, ever closer to Christ. So with that further ado, we'll introduce Father Lucia, who will make a statement, and afterwards he will respond to questions, which I'm sure many of you will have. So. Well, good morning. I'll try to make this voice work, but it just happened spring hit at the right time. So um, I'm gonna read a prepared statement and pardon the way I hold this this morning, but I don't wanna block the microphones either. I wanna first of all thank Bishop Cunningham because um, today I stand before all of you still in shock over the occasion that gathers us together. In truth, I've never stood before so many cameras and microphones, but I appreciate all of you being here for this announcement. You would be correct in stating that this appointment as the 11th Bishop of Syracuse comes as a total surprise to me. I've had no clue whatsoever that my life was going to change so dramatically. But that being said, here I am. And I want to begin by expressing my gratitude to His Holiness, Pope Francis, for gifting me with this precious portion of God's flock and the confidence he has placed in me in asking me to be her shepherd. I share the Holy Father of my communion with him and the College of Bishops, along with the promise of daily prayer for his own ministry. Next, I want to thank Bishop Cunningham for his warm welcome and for his generous support over the last few days as I tried to figure out what I was supposed to do while maintaining strict confidentiality. <laughs> Little did I ever expect that 15 years after welcoming Bishop Cunningham to Augensburg and assisting him with that transition in his life, 
that he would be doing the same for me here in Syracuse. It just so happened, without either one of us knowing of the forthcoming appointment, that I was seated directly across from him at his Golden Jubilee in the cathedral. Bishop Cunningham knows already that I will need his wise counsel as I seek to care for the church, our mother, as he did. But also, I promised him that I want him to enjoy retirement. And again, Bishop Cunningham, thank you for the friendship that we share, and I'm looking forward to having you in the neighborhood. <clears throat> My next words of gratitude are addressed to Bishop Terry Lavalley and to the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the Diocese of Augensburg, who have helped form me into the man and priest I am today. Bishop Lavalley has been a treasured friend since our seminary days. He has spurred me on to greater holiness since our earliest days in priesthood and continues to challenge me in my service to the people of God, along with getting enough exercise <laughs> through his own personal example. The priests, deacons, religious, and lay faithful of the Diocese of Augsburg have been true companions on the journey, and I'm most grateful for their love and support along the way. If I might add, I can also tell you, many of them have roots in Syracuse, so I've learned very much about the church in Syracuse from them through the years, and so I look forward to being here. Family is important to me, and I want to publicly thank my parents for being for me and my siblings the first teachers in the faith by their own example. On the bottom of the chalice which my family gave me by their own ex when I was ordained as a priest are the words ordained to God's service. These words have been a beacon for the past 30 years of my priestly ministry, and they set the stage for the next part of the journey with you. I'm here to serve the people of the Diocese of, Car of Syracuse, Catholic and non-Catholic alike. I look forward to getting to know you and you getting to know me. And I can tell you that one of my first priorities will be to visit folks in their parishes. Since receiving the call from Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the papal nuncio to the US, and to whom I'm grateful also for his kind assurance and solicitude, I've been wondering what the motto for my service as a bishop would be. The words that kept coming to me were, in the name of Jesus. They are taken from the third chapter of the Acts of the Apostles and reference the greatest gift Peter could give someone along the way to show the healing and merciful face of God. That is my simple prayer for my time of service in the Diocese of Syracuse. Please pray for me and know that I've already begun to do so for you since my initial conversation with Archbishop Pierre. Again, I thank you for your presence here today and I open it up for questions as soon as I take a sip of water. <laughs> Thank you very much. So you had no idea this was coming. I had no idea. If I said, in fact, I told my folks on Sunday night, and I said, I wish somebody did have a camera when I answered the phone, because I think it would have been the most shocked look I've ever had in my life. Um, I had no idea whatsoever. Um, in fact, as I said, I was in the cathedral actually the day before for the Golden Jubilee. Not a clue. In fact, I was thinking some of the priests who saw me, they probably were wondering, Doug, did you have any clue? And no, not at all. So how do you process this? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> it, you, it, it's one of those things that you keep, you, um, in a sense, you just begin and you calm yourself and you just say, okay, one step at a time. And when I've transferred parishes, I've always had a philosophy that you consult, you don't make any big changes, 
you just see how things are, where things are, and then you go. But that's how, and that's the only way to handle. But you're right, right now it's like, even this morning, it was sort of like, pinch myself, is this real? <laughs> um, but it is, and I'm excited, I, I can't deny it. It's, uh, it's nothing I would ever thought of, but yet at the same time, I always believe in the words that God's grace is enough for us. And so that's what I rely on right now. When you mentioned healing, healing this time is a troubled time for the Catholic Church. Right. Is that where that's coming from when you mentioned healing? In part, yeah. And in part, um, in my own life, when it comes to clergy abuse and the scandal, I've known it for like 33 years because even one of my own pastors was, um, was dismissed because of charges. And so I've, I've seen the pain in parish communities. I've seen people's lives totally destroyed. And so I just want to be a healing presence. I want them to know that they can come to me, that I want to hear them, I want to be there for them. And yet I know it's not anything magical, but it just, it's, for me, one of the great examples is Pope Francis. And Pope Francis keeps telling us, to meet people where they're at and to accompany them. And that's what I see my ministry as. What's this process like? I mean, you didn't know about it, so it's not like you send your resume to the, to the Pope. <laughs> you, you're right. And the only clue I had this morning, and I don't know if she was supposed to tell me, is my secretary in the tribunal said to me, well, I had to write a letter. That's all I know so far. Um, my secretary said something to me about having to write a letter, but. Um, I, I do not know, I mean, like I said, it came like a, you know, you see some of those sometimes on um, these days with, with YouTube and everything, you get these fantastic shots of lightning or something all of a sudden coming out of the sky like a bolt. And that's all it was, it, it really was, it was like a bolt of lightning, so. What was that response like coming, uh, like family and friends? Well, of course, my friends only learned I have not talked to, I've been getting, as you imagine, my, um, my Facebook and all that today and, and my email have been, um, because my friends didn't know until the announcement was released this morning. I went to tell my parents because um, I wanted them to know and um, they're up there in years and so I, I just wanted to calm them in that sense of <laughs> that this is okay, there's nothing to worry about. Um, <laughs> And um, so, um, but they, they were very, uh, I come from a small town, so I will tell you um, their reaction was, and the Bishop of Augensburg happens to come from the town next to where I grew up. And so it was very interesting that my parents' comments were, who would have thought that two bishops would come from two such small towns? <laughs> and that, but I know they're happy, and if their health permits, they're planning to come to Syracuse for the for the ordination when we get that uh, scheduled. So. Is Julie McMahon from the Post Standard? Sure. I think some people in the church would love to hear about a little about who you are and, and some of your background and experiences and things you're looking forward to exploring in Syracuse. Well, who I am, I'm. You've seen my bio, so I won't go through that. But I I am a twin. So um, just just so you know, I I have a twin brother and. I don't know if this says, but he's retired. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but anyways, I, I, was, I have a twin brother, and um, I have a younger sister and a younger brother. And um, for family, I have um, two nephews and two nieces, so I, we, we're, we, I've got an even pair there. But um, grew up in the northeastern part of the state, a little town called Altona basically about five, six miles from the Canadian border. Um, went to um, public school. I mean, was an altar server. Just normal things as a kid. Um, had thought about being a priest, but had thought of other things too. Um, and, but eventually, um, I was led when I was in high school. I had been dating and everything, but this question about priesthood kept coming to my mind, so I decided at that time we were privileged to have Wadhams Hall um, in, in Augensburg as a seminary college. So um, 
I can remember just trying to convince my dad, Dad, it'd be better for me to go and find out now than later if God's calling me to be a priest. And so that's what happened. And so I went to Wadham's Hall and then still thought God might be calling me. So I went on to Christ the King Seminary in East Aurora, where eventually I, I was ordained. And after I was ordained, it got a little bit interesting in the sense that um, all of a sudden, I know God was a, a God of surprises sometime because I was only ordained about six months and um, we were asked if, I was asked if I would go and help our neighbor to the north in the Diocese of Alexandria Cornwall because they were having a priest shortage. And so I was asked if um, I would go on loan to them. And so I had the great privilege of serving in a Canadian diocese for a couple years. Eventually, my term was up, came back home, and served in Plattsburgh, and was very calm there. And then um, our bishop at the time, Bishop Laverde, called me, said, I need you to come to Augensburg. So just when I ever thought I was getting settled, <laughs> the call came. And so I went to Augensburg, and that's when, um, while serving at the cathedral, I was asked if I would work at the tribunal and in the chancery. And sort of that's been the history for the last 20 years. But I've been blessed with some great, uh, great parish assignments. Um, as the folks, in, especially my last parish, will tell you, I love sports. I'm going to disappoint some people, but I'm a great Boston Red Sox fan. <laughs> um, and they know it. Uh, somebody laughed. They walked in my rectory the other day. They go, is there anything that's not Boston Red Sox? But anyways. Um, but I enjoy sports, so I'm really looking forward to even getting over to the ballpark and watch games. And, but I also, I really do try to do sports myself. And so I, I'm looking forward to, um, that's my pastime. If anybody wants to know what, what, what my pastime is, I do when I get a chance. I love to work out. I love to hike. My, my father asked me the other day, are you bringing your kayak? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in, in some ways, that's a little about me. Um, the, the, other, the other part is, as you know, I am a canon lawyer. Um, I had the privilege of being studying in Rome, which was great because um, I have to admit, if, if I ever got an education, it was after about being ordained eight, eight years, I got to go back to school. And it was like opening my eyes. And so I, but I had the great privilege of doing that over at the um, University of St. Thomas in Rome. And um, again, those are memorable days for, not only because St. John Paul II was the Pope, so I actually got to meet him and be with him on more than one occasion, but just also um, being able to travel Europe. And like when I saw Notre Dame go down, um, when we saw the fire in April, it was really f interesting because it would be about 20 years ago to the day I had, um, I had mass in Notre Dame. So it was just, there's a lot of memories there. Are you an SU fan as well? Yes, I am. Actually, I didn't bring it with, you, with me, but I have my shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. So. What, what do you see for the future of this diocese? Well, I have to be honest with you. I have to get to know this diocese. I, like I say, I was not expecting this, so I have not done any advanced reading. I have not... Um, I, uh, but my hope with, with this diocese would be the same hope I had in the two parishes I was serving. And in the parishes I was serving in, one thing we really realized is we needed to reach out. We needed to reach out to folks. We needed to bring them the good news of Jesus Christ where they're at. And yet, um, really go about it by welcoming people, making the church hospitable. Um, one of my favorite um, sayings and scriptures is at the end of Psalm 87 where it says, and you all find their home. And I really, I really hold that, that hopefully that um, people will find in the church a home. And so that's what I want to build. I, I see the church as family, and so I want to build a home where people can be. And it doesn't mean as family that we're going to agree on everything. I, I know that from having a twin brother <laughs> and having other siblings. I, I know we're not always going to agree on everything, but as I try to tell people sometimes, just because we, doesn't, we don't agree doesn't mean that we're not part of the same family. And so that's really important to me. Any other questions? I 
I guess I'll ask one more. You've already mentioned in your, your statement, you mentioned your Facebook page, YouTube, email. We know our bishop has a Twitter account. Uh, speak to you know the, the reach, the, the change in technology, bringing in people that maybe were turned off years ago, but, but through other platforms you can bring them back. Yeah, um, I have to be honest with you. I, I'm, as my, uh, as the IT director up at the Chancery in Augensburg would tell you, I am not a techie. So I have, there's a little bit of a learning curve for me, but I do believe that um, how we can reach out to people is important. Probably the one person I follow um, is there, um, there's uh, Father Casey or Brother Casey who has a, a web page that I follow because I'm interested how he uses social media, media to proclaim the faith, to proclaim the gospel. And that's what I sort of want to see it as, that being able to reach out to people that they have access. I guess that's my big thing, that people have access to the church, that they don't see it as closed, that the, the doors are open, okay? So, but as far as social media, that means, for me at least, having to have a little bit of a learning curve and using it more. Because I have to admit, as judicial vicar, I didn't have to Twitter much <laughs> or Instagram. Yeah. And what's it like to take over the, the business side of things? Is that something new for you? And uh, it's, you know, the job of bishop is, is more than, than, than the religious side. Right. And I'm blessed in the sense that I've, I've been a pastor for many years now. So my pastorate, when I was in Canton, New York, had a Catholic school. So... I used to trying to um, keep the doors open, um, funding, and so I realized that we're going to have to work on that side and, and, um, and manage. But I, I guess my big thing is, again, it's the consultation, that I really will expect um, those I work with, and like, for instance, the finance council, the diocese and that, to, to be... Um, my counselors and to, to really help me to keep, I like to use the image of a ship, to keep the ship on an even keel. And so that's what I'm hoping to do. Thank you, and I'm sorry about the voice. Hopefully you'll hear I do have a stronger voice, but <laughs> thank you. We are obviously blessed to have this news, to have your leadership. We are so looking forward to getting to know you and to have you lead us. For the rest of the day, uh, for those of you who are curious, we will be meeting with diocesan staff next. Uh, just a meet and greet very, very quickly. Uh, both Bishop Cunningham and Bishop Alec Lucia will can celebrate the 1210 Mass. You're welcome to attend. Please do join us if you can. Followed, uh, following the Mass, we will have just a brief, we will try to give him a little nourishment, a little bit of lunch. Uh, and then when we talked with, with him, we asked, what, what would you like to see in Syracuse in this very short period of time? Uh, and his first request was to see uh, one of the Catholic Charities emergency shelters. So we will be going to the men's shelter, then we will be traveling to the Basilica of the Sacred Heart, and I think that makes it a full day, at least for today. So that's our agenda, and I thank you so much for being here. And I would be remiss if I didn't for a moment also thank Bishop Cunningham for 12 years of being our shepherd, for being our leader, filled with compassion and love for the people of the Diocese of Syracuse through good times and bad. We embrace you, we thank you, and we love you. Thank you.